Hello everyone, Sam from Cinch here, and I have a very exciting car beside me today. I've got Hyundai's Kona N, quite possibly, actually no, most definitely the maddest hot crossover that's driven by its front wheels only in the world right now. This thing is insane. I mean, for starters, look at it. It is not trying to say anything other than I am a steroidal Kona N. This car costs just over 35,000 pounds new. That means it's about 7,000 pounds more than a Ford Puma ST, another front wheel drive hot crossover. And it's also four to 5,000 pounds less than four wheel drive equivalents made by the likes of Volkswagen with its T-Roc R or the Coupe Reform Mentor. So this car sits in its own little quite insane world, which is why I cannot wait to drive it today. We're here at Rockingham, if you couldn't tell already, but we will also be putting this car to test out on the road to see if it can do the full crossover job. But let's get started with a look at this thing. They are not trying to hide this car's intentions, are they, at all? It's got all of this crazy bodywork around here. I actually really like the black Hyundai badge down here. There's openings here, which actually do serve a purpose. My finger could go through there, it's not fake. 19 inch alloy wheels, big, big brakes up front, sticky P0 tires. And of course, the thing doing the driving under the bonnet is a 280 horsepower, two liter turbocharged engine shared with the i30N hot hatch, which is a fabulous, fabulous car. This car comes as standard, and that's really key, a electronically controlled limited slip differential. If you don't know what that is, essentially it means all the power going to these front wheels is better controlled, and that's gonna pay dividends today, especially when I'm running around on a circuit as greasy and slippery as this one. Automatic eight-speed gearbox is standard fitment. You can't get a manual gearbox like you can on the i30N, but I mean, that kind of suits the character of this car, I think. It's, it's not trying to be as hardcore driver's car, or well, maybe it is actually. We'll put that to the test later, I promise. I'm a massive fan of the rear end of this car. I mean, okay, it's a totally fake diffuser, but these two exhaust pipes here are real. They're not fake. And I know that because when I started the car this morning, it was very cold. I immediately clicked it into end mode just to see what would happen when it's cold. I wanted to hear it, to be honest with you. And well, both of the tailpipes were smoking away with their condensation equally. So genuine, genuine two pipe system here, which sounds absolutely mental as you'd hope, given that this is high end. They love doing this kind of stuff. It comes with so much standard equipment the only option on this car, believe it or not, is the paintwork, a 565 pound option. Inside, everything is standard and there is a lot of equipment. So let's take a closer look, let's jump in. Okay, so inside the Kona N, it is a mix of standard Kona and bits of Kona N. Of course, you get loads of N goodies in here, which signal that this is a performance car, starting with the steering wheel, which is, as far as I can tell, identical to the one you get in the i30N. That means it gets these two N buttons down here, and you've got paddle shifters here, this being an automatic. They're mounted to the steering wheel, so it feels, as far as where you're grabbing, like a sports car straight away. Really, really telling. This little button down here, we'll run through this in a bit, but Essentially, it's like an overboost button, gives you a bit more power, which is great. I love that that's all within fingertip reach right here. Typical of Hyundai's end division already, even though they're still a fairly new division. But otherwise, it's just Kona. And that really, when you take into account that this is just over 35,000 pounds, it's not great because it means you don't get the highest quality materials. It doesn't feel particularly flash. And, you know, you're touching surfaces down here and they're slightly harder plastics, but Credit where credit's due, it feels very tough and very well put together. And I think that's probably going to be the priority for people who buy a crossover. If you've got kids playing with bits of cabin trim, it's nice to know they're gonna stay attached to the car. I almost forgot to mention these seats, which are really, really nice. Um, they are heated and cooled. That's all standard equipment. So it means you can have your air conditioning on your backside, but you can have hot air blowing on your face if you're into that kind of thing. Um, and they're also very supportive. Great lumbar support. They go nice in the car. You don't sit particularly low. You are still in an elevated position. But as I said, with this crossover being still, even in an end mode, it's still a crossover. So I think people want to sit in a more elevated position. You've got great visibility. You can see all around the car so easily. And with that camera that you get by default in this screen here, it's, it's so easy to drive this car around in the narrowest of city streets. The infotainment system itself is joined by a digital instrument cluster over here. So you've got quite a lot of digital displays and they're very simple, not particularly flash, 
but they are very, very good and very functional and quick to respond. As you can see here, you get loads of information. We've got the sat nav showing here, and then you've got your weather forecast here. You can skim through and have different things. There is an end mode in here, which we'll talk about when we're out on circuit later, which shows you all of the car's performance parameters. And when you click this end button down here, the car then changes its, its central display here to be more informative when it comes to telling about performance. It just looks cooler. There's an interesting feature that I just discovered, and let's see if it works now. That's called the sound of nature, and it obviously isn't an end model thing. This is just a Kona thing. Essentially, you're hearing the sound of a fireplace, which is quite weird. <laughs> but if you skim through, we can have a snowy village, lively forest, even an open air cafe. How weird is that? So I think we should probably get out and hit the road. Although before we do, let me just draw your attention to how many Konas we have on Cinch at the moment. We have petrol, we have electric and hybrid models all on Cinch right now. And of course, a host of loads of other cars. So make sure you get onto Cinch when you're looking for your next car. Right, let's get onto the road. Well, out on the road, out in glorious January sunshine, the Kona N feels like a Kona. Uh, it is a very normal and pretty relaxed feeling car when you take into account that this thing is extremely focused. It does always signal intent. It's a little bit firm riding, but not quite as firm riding as I imagine a prototype I drove last year. That car was really quite brittle. And I think I and I listened to the responses of journalists who said that it was just possibly a little bit too hard, a little bit too firm for the British B-roads that we have, one I'm conveniently on now, because in this softer setting, and you can adjust the suspension, it's electronically controlled suspension, you can adjust the stiffness of the suspension and soften the car off, which I've done. This is a 1.5 ton car, I'm a little higher than I am, than I would be in an i30N, yet it rides stably, doesn't roll around, when I hit bumps and stuff, the car compresses nicely over them. Where the ride's Achilles heel is, is on smaller and slightly higher frequency bumps. If you're going over, for example, a cattle grid or you're driving over bad pothole roads in the city center of somewhere in the UK, you will get juggled about. You will be rumbled around in your seat. But on the slightly more flowing sections of road, places you would think this car's more naturally adapted, it does flow quite nicely and actually, the ride's actually a lot better than I remember. I actually do quite like the fact that it's always telling me it wants to be a sports car. I mean, the steering's always quite quick, so there's good reactivity from the front end in all driving scenarios. It's not a variable rack, this just feels reactive all the time. It feels honest in that regard. And the brake pedal pressure is nice and easy to regulate. And the engine, 280 horsepower. Most of the power is near the top end. It red lines at just over 6,500. But there is a decent amount of torque decent amount of low-end muscle and that does mean that the gearbox which obviously is the standard fit eight-speed dual clutch transmission it doesn't have to overly work to keep the performance of the engine you don't find yourself constantly changing down gears or hearing the engine change down gears um, it, it can settle into a cruise quite comfortably and also because this is a Hyundai it gets all of the standard features that you get on Kona I have so many driver assist features when I was on the motorway on the drive up to Rockingham I basically was doing very little work. I had adaptive cruise control on, I had auto steer on. I was doing very little from behind the car. It was regulating the speed compared to the car ahead of me and it was actually doing about 90% of the steering effort as well. Hyundai's semi-autonomous, I guess they call it now, steering systems are really, really very good. And actually up there with some of the, some of the best overall, not just in this class. Oh, I love that. When you press the button on the left of the steering wheel, you can click straight into your normal or your sport mode from the eco mode. And obviously the button on the right is your end mode. We'll test that in a minute when we're on circuit. The steering is weighted up now. I'm in sport mode. It's not overly heavy. It's not a workout to turn the wheel, but I do feel like I'm in control. I'm going over bumps and the wheel's not jiggling around in my hand. So it's nicely judged. Interestingly though, in this car, on top of the sport modes and on top of the stuff that makes it an end model, you still do get your traction modes, which are supposedly off-road modes. And if I click this button down here, I get into a section where I've got snow, deep snow, mud, and sand. I think this is more playing with the electronics than anything. It's not suddenly turning the car into a four-wheel drive machine, I can tell you that, that's physically impossible. And one of my favorite features of Hyundai's 
and their end models is the fact that the traction control or stability control system button is prominent and always just where you need it. In this case, it's just to my left here. Now I'm gonna click it across into some of the modes that you can access from the end mode button on the screen, which doesn't in instantly put the car into its most aggressive modes. What it does is it opens up a section of menu where you can then play and start to choose whether you want different things set in different ways. So I can have the steering as light as possible. I'm gonna take it back to sport. Take the steering into sport. That's better. Oh, good grip on the front. It just feels really pointy and nice. And this is on a bumpy, broken V-Road. But I think the key one and the key setting people are gonna play with is they're probably gonna have the suspension in the UK set to a much softer mode but they're gonna leave the engine and the gearbox in their fastest modes because that gives you the most forgiving setting. And immediately on this road, it just feels better to me. It just feels nicer to drive. I'm feeling far fewer of the imperfections and there are a lot of imperfections on this surface. It's a fun car, this. <laughs> Great front end, a willing back end, but in no way scary. I feel right on top of the car straight away. So yeah, I mean, when it comes to the fun stuff on the road, I'm sold because I do really enjoy this. However, I'm more sold by the prospect of an i20N or an i30N hot hatch because those are the things I like. This is a crossover. So why would you want a crossover? Well, it's probably because you want to do the practical stuff on top of the fun stuff. So I think it makes sense to go and head to the local superstore and see what this thing's like when it comes to measuring practicality and using that boot. So obviously this being a crossover, you're probably going to want to use it for shopping or indeed to go on holiday with the family or to take them to the airport. So boot space is going to be of high importance. Now, despite having these big exhausts down here, you don't actually lose any boot space compared with the normal petrol Kona model, which has 374 liters of boot space. Uh, it gets, well, a decent amount of room. Obviously these seats fold down if you need them to, and you've got some underfloor storage under here. Now this is, what would normally be in another model, the spare wheel well, but in this Kona N, it is just a vacant space that you can use. And instead of a spare wheel, you get a tire mobility kit. That's standard practice these days. Now, this floor actually lowers down. So you have a wider amount of space in the boot itself, which would prove especially handy if your suitcases are pretty large. Handily, we have some large suitcases here. This is a big, big suitcase. And that slots in there, no problem. You can get this one on top. I'm not very good at Tetris, but let's try. Get the little one down here. And of course, by removing this parcel shelf, which I'm not doing a good job of. There you go, all in. So that's a family's worth or a small family's worth of suitcases in there. No problem whatsoever. It's a fair size. It's not a big crossover. It's not an SUV really. So that's a fair size of space. And it's very much the same story inside in the back. The space is pretty good here in the back, given that this is actually still quite a small crossover. The front seat in front of me is set how I like it. I'm above average in height. So for me to be able to fit here comfortably with really good knee room and pretty decent foot room as well, that's impressive. Same, same goes for the headroom above me as well. I've got good shoulder space. The seats are nice and comfortable, I should say. Uh, and although the middle seat is quite narrow, you wouldn't want to carry an adult in this middle seat for a very long time. You get your cup holders and an armrest here. And I should add, you also get heated seats in the back. That's really, really cool. Okay, now for the fun bit. Let's go back to the track. <laughs> this is more like it. On circuit in the Kona N, which immediately is a lunatic. It doesn't feel like a crossover. It does not feel like a crossover one bit. We're straight into end mode, of course, and it is so, so, so agile. It just doesn't feel at all like a Kona. It feels like an i30N plus a little bit more, a little bit more roll, but not a lot more, not a lot more at all. Nought to 62 miles per hour with launch control on, as I had just there, 5.5 seconds. It's quick. It's also got loads and loads of front end grip. You can just throw the car in and it grips. Wow, I thought it was gonna to start to push there, but it's just stuck to the asphalt. Big oversteer. <laughs> it's very, 
very mobile, like its siblings. I mean, the Kona N comes just like its siblings with a warranty that lets you do track days. Hi and I, if they see pictures of you out on circuit doing a track day in your crossover and then you have some kind of problem, they'll still cover you because they cover cars on circuit. Oh, it's quick. <laughs> which is telling in itself, but you probably would think, no, no one's gonna do a track day in one of these. Well, I certainly thought that. I thought you'd buy a hatchback, wouldn't you? You wouldn't buy the Kona N. Why would you buy this? But let's say you've got a bicycle, as I do. Let's say you wanted a higher load level. Let's say your partner, they wanted a car that was a little bit taller. And let's say your kids in the back, they like sitting in a higher up car. Or let's just say you like crossovers, you like SUVs, a lot of people do these days but you also want to do a track day. <laughs> it does all these things, it promises to do these things and it does them. I can tell you that, two laps in and it's doing them very well indeed. On the road it feels a little bit stiff, almost a little bit, maybe a tad too aggressive in some settings but it is just about acceptable. It's only because its rivals in the class are so good at doing everything but you understand why the car is set up in that way on the road, because it means you can do this. There is no other car that feels like a hot hatch in this segment as much as this does. If you go up in price bracket, if you go to those T-Roc cars and those Cooper Four Mentors and other all-wheel drive cars, they will skid around, they will dance around for days, but they don't feel quite as, well, quite as naturally sporting, I think. They feel like they're just fantastic imposters, I think really capable but not not truly sporting underneath this on the other hand <laughs> it feels it almost feels like a sports car that accidentally became a crossover somehow brakes strong good pedal regulation steering yes good steering it's nice the front axles good grip it's really cold out here today but there's loads of grip it hops through the bends i'm actually banging my knee on this <laughs> transmission tunnel here because of the amount of woo, the amount of hopping because we're higher up of course so it's not the most comfortable track car i'll give you that and i am moving around i would need a bit more bolstering i think I'm sort of hanging on whoa big slide big slide woo, 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 woo. yep yep doesn't quite like being lobbed around as much as a hatchback so we are finding the limits quite a bit quicker than you would do in the i30n for example even the i20n I really like the engine though, it just sounds so nice. You don't actually hear the pops and crackles from the exhaust as much on circuit because of the road noise. But they've piped in, I think, the intake noise. It sounds great, it sounds, sounds great, that downshift there. I'm not really missing a manual. I think it's because there's, well, I think it's because it's taller. It doesn't feel fully, fully, fully like a track car. So I don't feel like I need every, every detail for a, a hot hatch. I'm quite happy to let the gearbox, which I must say is bloody good. I mean, it's a quick shifting gearbox. Brakes, how are they doing this? It's not, it's not the heaviest car really. It's a 1.5 ton car, which today isn't a lot. Doesn't have the four wheel drive system of other cars to weigh it down. Because it's a bit softer, it's a little bit more forgiving on the throttle. So. If I am overdoing it, if I'm asking too much, it just slightly pushes into one step, but then it just hooks up and you're good. And I mean, as I said, this is a cold day. We're always up in the air most of this lap. This is a cold day. So naturally, it would be even grippier, probably even more hoppy. You might need to wear knee pads <laughs> on, a, on a warmer day, on a warm circuit. So yeah, it does the track day stuff really well. And actually on circuit, you don't notice that it's not the strongest motor at the bottom end. Of course, there are other cars with 300 horsepower from their two litre engines. They leave this to death. There are cars with 400 horsepower if you want to spend a few more pounds. But if, if you take into account that on circuit, you're always revving it. You're always revving it out. You don't notice that, that mid-range deficit because you're right up there in the, the hot end of the motor. And it just sounds great. So I'm not really too bothered. I quite like having to work it hard. It feels 
more like a naturally aspirated engine. I love this corner. <laughs> it's tremendous. Hi, didn't I? You maniacs. So, surprise, surprise, Hyundai's latest end division product is another mad one. It is extremely niche, but I absolutely love it. The fact it can work on track and just go all day long, it's brilliant. So, so much fun. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, don't forget to like it and of course subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button because we have loads more videos in the pipeline, loads more awesome stuff here at Rockingham and elsewhere. See you soon.